Moments after a dramatic shootout between police and Zama Zamas in Ikuruleni. Gebote inspired John Steenhuizen's utterances this weekend, and the mop-up and aid relief after Western Cape's devastating storms. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. Police have arrested seven illegal miners after a shootout between them and the Kuruleni Metro officers and police today. Currently on scene at the behind the Summer and Jack Landfall site in Primrose in the Germiston area where there's been operation by members of the Kuruleni Metro Police Department um, where several suspected Zamazamas have been arrested, some have been injured in what is believed to be shootings. It is unclear at the moment whether the shooting involved members of EMPD or whether the suspected Zamazamas had been shooting at each other. Um, this is a long-standing issue which has been going on in the area of turf and rival gang wars between Zamazamas who operate from the Summa and Jack landfall site. Here you can see a number of firearms and ammunition including shotguns have been recovered. Um, a number of the suspects have um, been injured and are receiving medical attention. There's a lot of speculation surrounding John Steenhuizen's comments this weekend and whether a speech by P.W. Boerter in 1985 inspired the DA leader. Here's C.D. Madea's take. The party is being asked over and over by journalists what happens if John Steenhuizen doesn't perform well, uh, if the party doesn't perform well with John at the helm. Does he get the same treatment as a Musi Maimani? Does he get investigated? Does he get a report that speaks about his leadership? There are many issues that brought the DA to its knees in 2019. My assessment is that a lot of those remain unaddressed. They're polished over and we're told that actually things are better. In fact, what's interesting for me is that when you speak to people in the DA, they're looking forward to the possibility of Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hugh Lewis rising to become a federal leader. Some saying that that's a progressive leader, that's somebody who's more measured, who's not as emotional, and who's able to take the party forward, or at least give some clarity about where the party stands. And in all honesty, I find lots of things quite wanting in the way that he's carried himself. In fact, the, the part where he's been compared to P.W. Buota in the 1985 speech should worry John Stenhazen because that's the kind of messaging that you, you, you bring. And again, parties fall or rise on the shoulders of their leaders. So I do think that the DA is actually going to these elections with a bit of a liability in its leadership. The trail of destruction after apocalyptic waves, strong winds and heavy rains in the Western Cape. Several informal settlements have been severely damaged, leaving hundreds of people homeless and in need of aid. A man died after a tree fell on him in Paul. More than 132 schools have been damaged by the storms and at least 270,000 pupils affected by closures. Schools outside of these districts that request closure due to severe infrastructure damage or inaccessibility. This will be considered by the department on a case-by-case -case basis through the normal procedures for requesting school closure. Schools with the necessary permission to close will communicate directly with parents. A level four weather warning remains in place. Flooding has been reported in some parts of the garden route with George measuring more than 100 millimetres of rain over the past 24 hours. Schools in the Overberg and Cape Winelands areas remain closed. In Gauteng, heavy rains too in Swane and Johannesburg. A motorist was rescued in Centurion after she was trapped on a flooded road. The worst of the weather, thankfully, seems to be over. We're still urging our residents to exercise caution, try and avoid crossing river streams as and when they're conducting their daily activities, monitor young kids to stay away from drainage systems and also river streams. A massive win for Jacob Zuma and his Omkontwa Wesizwe party. The electoral court has ruled the former president can contest the election and his face can go onto the ballot paper. This is despite an earlier independent electoral commission ruling preventing him from running due to his 15-month sentencing for contempt of court.
Former President Jacob Zuma approached the Electoral Court to appeal the decision which barred him from being a candidate for his MK party and being able to take a seat in Parliament. The IEC had decided to uphold an objection that was made against Zuma's candidacy. In a brief order, the Electoral Court ruled that Zuma's appeal succeeds and the decision by the IEC is set aside. This means the former president will remain on the MK party list as its candidate. The court has also ordered that the IEC's decision to uphold the objection should be replaced with the words the objection is hereby dismissed. Ultimately, this ruling means the former president could make a return to the National Assembly. Khomuz Amudise, Eyewitness News, Johannesburg. The fight at sugar producer Tongart Hewlett has again turned bitter as allegations of fraud overshadow the business rescue process. So two proposals were initially on the table with Vision Consortium and Mozambique and Company RGS Group both vying for control of Tongat Hewlett. But RGS pulled out of the race pretty much at the 11th hour at the start of the year, making it a one-horse race for the company that's been in business rescue since 2022. Now, the successful bidder, Vision Consortium, now alleges that even before RGS pulled out of the race on the eve of an all-important shareholders' vote, the Mozambican firm had already submitted fraudulent proof of funding, claiming it had 2 billion rand in the kitty for the takeover. And this, of course, was in a bid to convince shareholders that it was the right selected equity partner for the deal. Now, the proof that it submitted was in the form of a letter purporting to emanate from Absa Bank Mozambique, dated September 2023. Now, executives at Vision have now filed a criminal complaint against RGS at the Santon Police Station. Despite what appears to be underhanded tactics by competitors, once finalized, the business rescue plan will see Vision hold the majority share of Tongat in a debt for equity swap with existing shareholders retaining almost 3% in shares. Nobukai Dambo, Eyewitness News. That's it from me, Jane Dutton, and the rest of the team. We leave you with these images of last night's total solar eclipse, the first in seven years, which plunged the day into darkness in Mexico, Canada, Texas, and the rest of the U.S. Eyewitness News, in touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.